It's a pleasure to have you with us in the presentation today. Today, we will present about lumpy skin disease. Let me introduce my group's member, the Antipalat number 15, Bunyasita 24, Silakan 35, Sina 37, Nanisha 51, and Vanita 62. This is our slide that we will present. First part, we will focus on chief campaign, history taking, and signal men. The chief campaign from the farm are small and large diffuse nodules as here throughout the body and swelling leg and joints. About history of farm, we visit the first farm on 20 July and the second and third farm we visit on 22 July. Lumpy skin disease outbreak occur in the first and third farm in May, while outbreak in the second farm in July. The morbidity of each farm is 30, 20, and 18 percent, respectively. The mortality is low in the third farm, that is 3.57 percent, while the third and second farm are 0 percent. Sick animals from each farm are สาชาเขียว and สาวหก respectively. For treatment history of sa and ชาเขียว, they receive an anti-inflammatory drugs and antibiotic. Why สาวหก receive only anti-inflammatory drugs? They are vary in milk production from seven to eleven point five. How per day? Further information, Cha Kiao is decreased appetite and hypersalivation. Cao Ho is already recovered from lumpy skin disease but recurrent infected. Sa Cha Kiao and Cao Ho are female and hostile vision vary in age from 2 to 3 years and Cha Kiao is a high fur. Now, please take a look at the physical examination. From this table, the result of physical examination in part of the cardiovascular, respiratory system, and lecture temperature are normal. The digestive system and hydration status are normal too, but during leg palpation, found fluctuated nodule in SA. This is Image of sa lesion, the left high limb is swelling and has fluctuated nodules. This is image of sa lesion. There are small nodules throughout all of the body and the right high limb is swelling. This is image of sa hok lesion. There are recurrent of small nodules on the body and has some cuts on its neck. Then I would like to draw your attention to the problem list and differential and initial assessment. For the problem list, first is generalized skin nodules, and second is swelling legs and joint. And now for uh, for our initial assessment. The first one is generalized skin nodules that made from the integumentary system or the skin that may cause by infection. Um, first one is virus, like lumpy skin disease, pseudo lumpy skin disease, foot and mouth disease, and from bacteria like cutaneous tuberculosis, fungi from dermatophilosis, ringworm, and ectoparasite that may from insect or tick bite, immodicosis, and lastly, endoparasite from onchocerciasis or maybe from allergy that may cause a diarrhea. So we can rule out some of the disease by looking at the lesion. For lumpy skin disease, we will found circumscribed firm round and raised cutaneous nodules that had a patognomonic lesion that causes fast, which is a cutaneous nodules with nicotic center that will raise and hard and um, separate clearly from the surrounding skin. And from the lesion of the cow, we can ruin this. Next, uh, pseudolumpic skin disease will come in superficial cutaneous nodules. Foot and mouth disease will be a vesicle and bullet. 
and for Hiranyas tuberculosis, it will come in um, single or multiple papules and nodules. And for dermatophilosis, it will present it in exudative papules and pustule plus thick crust. And in ringworm, we will find papules and that enlarge into thick grayish to white crust. And out of these five, we can rule out three of them and only pseudolumpic skin disease and cutaneous tuberculosis remain. Next, for insect or tick bite, we found multifocal circular scaly and mild ticking area of alopecia. And in demodicosis, we found multiple dermal papules and nodule plus um, normal skin hair coat or skin, normal skin and hair coat. And in oncocytosis, the, the disease itself is quite rare and it will present in firm subcutaneous nodules. And lastly, a carrier, it will come in wheels covered by normal appearing skin and hair coat. So we're going to rule out all four of these. And now we only have lumpy skin disease, pseudo lumpy skin disease, and cutaneous tuberculosis for generalized skin nodules. And for our second assessment, second problem, swelling legs and joints that may from vascular system that caused by edema or musculoskeletal system that caused by inflammation, trauma, tumor, infection from bacteria like bovine food rot, secondary infection or virus like lumpy skin disease. But we drew out trauma because the history didn't file any traumatic incidents and tumor. We drew out this because we found fluctuated um, nodule on the legs. So our tentative diagnosis now are first, lumpy skin disease, and second, pseudo-lumpy skin disease, third, uh, hearing tuberculosis. And uh, now let's move on our diagnostic plan and laboratory results. So uh, our plan is to do the biopsy for PCR testing for uh, lumpy skin disease, and blood collection to check the complete blood cloud and blood chemistry for health status and uh, to confirm the lumpy skin disease. And for bacterial infection, we can do um, staining techniques like acid fast stain or gram stain. And further, we can do bacterial culture and drug sensitivity, but we only done um, biopsy and blood collection from the field. And this is our result from uh, the complete blood count from SA, which is the count from farm one. Um, we found that all the parameters are all normal, except for the neutrophil that we found neutrophilia. And for red blood cell parameter, we found low MCV, MCH, and low hemoglobin. And our uh, interpretation for con the complete blood count uh, the neutrophilia with out shape to the left may be from physiological neutrophilia or infection and inflammation. And for low MCV, low MCX and hemoglobin, um, that may present it because of uh, microcytic red blood cell or anemia that may cause by iron deficiency or copper deficiency. And for the blood chemistry, we found that all AST, ALT, and creatinine are normal. And our PCR testing for lumpy skin disease, we found that Sa from form 1, Shakya from form 2, Nam Tan from form 2 are positive for lumpy skin disease, but other um, samples were all negative. So now by looking at the lesion character and the outbreak history of lumpy skin disease in the area and also the PCR result, we can now... Uh, define our definitive diagnosis as lumpy skin disease. And next, let's talk about the general information of this disease. Lumpy skin disease virus is a member of genus Carpipox virus and the family Poxviridae. Incubation period is about one to five weeks or 28 days. Cattle and water buffalo are susceptible to this virus. Morbidity rate is about five to 45% and mortality rate is less than 10%. Lumpy skin disease is endemic in most African countries. Since 2012, it has spread rapidly through the Middle East and Southeast Europe. 
In 2019, lumpy skin disease was first reported in Asia and the Pacific region, for example, Northwest China, Bangladesh, and India. During the northern summer of 2020, lumpy skin disease has continued its spread across continental Asia, with many members in South and Southeast Asia confirming outbreaks. And right now, lumpy skin disease is a new emerging disease for Thailand. First outbreak has seen early April 2021 in Ban Don De, San Suk Sub District, Phnom Pai District, Lai It. Transmission of lumpy skin disease. The principal pathway is transmission by vector that is but sucking insect. And the second is non vector transmission. It happens when non infected comes into contact with contaminated materials such as saliva, nasal, or ocular discharge or fomites. Lumpy skin disease is a disease caused by a viral infection, so there is no drug or treatment to kill the virus directly. However, the animals will be treated based on their symptoms together with the dietary supplements. Clinical signs of lumpy skin disease are divided into four states. State 1. Cattle show signs associated with a fever, depressed, and anorexia. Some cats may have nasal or ocular discharge. At this stage, NSAIDs are recommended for antipyretic and vitamins, especially vitamin A, D, E, selenium, and copper are used to keep animals healthy and immune. And step two, cutaneous nodules about two to five centimeters develop within 48 hours after February action. Other signs are limb node enlargement, hemorrhage, edema, and vasculitis. At this stage, insect and vitamin supplementation are still recommended. In case of secondary infection, antibiotic should be used. And step three, panognomonic lesion, nodal rupture, or cyst pass are seen. Some may have secondary bacterial infection, some may abortion and overall milk production are decreased. Cattle with this uh, serious condition usually have respiratory or systemic size, such as pneumonia or ascites. At this stage, both spectrum antibiotics and cells, the ethyl supplementation and wound dressing are recommended. If respiratory signs are present, cephalosporin is the of choice. And step four, wound healing and keratinization are present. Reproductive problems are more common in this state. However, they can also occur in state two to four. Wound dressing and dietary supplementation are recommended. Okay. And from the information, we can conclude that SA from farm one and Cha Chiao from farm two is in state three, and Sao Hope is in state four. The treatment plan will, will be modified based on clinical signs and drugs that are available on the farm. For farm one treatment plans, from history taking, the owner used to provide dicrofinac and punicin megumi, and it did not work as well. And at that time, she bought a new drug, that is carbofen. So we decided to prescribe carbofen for three days. And because of SA is in stable condition at that time, so antibiotics did not need to provide anymore. Moreover, from blood examination, or uh, from blood examination result, SA were anemia. Iron or copper supplements were recommend, and wound dressing are recommend too. Uh, for Shakyo from Pram 2, also in stable condition, but some wounds had passed. So we decided to prescribe ketoprofen for three days and penicillin streptomycin for five days together with the wound dressing until recovered. Sao Hok from Pram 3 was in recovery state. The, uh, the owner did not want to provide any antibiotics, and NSAIDs were only provided when the cattle have a fever. And the last topic, control and prevention. Points are uh, uh, supportive treatment is really important for infected animals. Report to Department of Livestock Development when you found animals with unknown cause of death and illness or suspected lumpy skin disease infection. Movement restriction, vector control, and vaccination are recommended if your farm is in infected soil. And requirements for vaccination program are infected soil. Animals that must be vaccinated are non-infected herd and healthy animals within radius 50 kilometers of infected point. For booster dose, vaccinated once a year in high-risk areas and two years for low-risk areas. 
There are two brands of vaccines in Thailand. Both are live attenuate homologous. The vaccine is administered as a single dose to cattle of all age, sex, and race. And the last, I would like to offer our special thanks to Luminant Clinical Clerkship Team for valuable advice. And thank you for attention.